I'm standing here on Pennsylvania Route 910, opposite Washington Street. I'm about to enter the tiny village of Indianola, Pennsylvania. Indianola is like many small rural villages. Some were divided in half by the old railroad tracks, the creek, or in this case, the main road. We are only going to focus our attention on this area here, however. Indianola was built around 1916 as a coal mining town, a company town, with company houses and the company store. Let me just give you a bit of history before we continue. There is very little here to see now, but back in 1903 was an entirely different story. Walk with me now into history to the former Indianola coal mine and the Indianola branch railroad of the Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad. We will start our walk on a street aptly named Shaft Street. Although the Indianola mine has long been gone, we will begin by looking at what is here now. The first shaft sunk here occurred in 1903, and only preliminary work had begun.
Today, the mine has long been gone, but through a series of photos, videos, and old mining maps, we can demonstrate where specific mining operations took place. Here we can clearly see where the main shaft was and still is located. The Tipu area hoist house was here. Rail tracks would have been running through this area to the Tipple. The second shaft and fan house would have been seen here. Again, the hoist house tipple area with rail lines leading through and under the tipple area and beyond. The Pennsylvania Turnpike was later built on the hillside. Deer Creek is just over the parking area. Rail lines continue to run through the parking area and into the wooded area beyond. It is my understanding that the material used to fill the former shafts is still sinking. And when this happens, new material is added, as in this case, gravel. Looking from the side of the building, Opposite the main shaft, four to five sets of rail tracks would have ran through this area. It would have been behind this large pine and behind the Indianola Post Office. The rail tracks coming from the mine would have crossed Rawlings Run, these tracks were storage tracks, either for empty hoppers or loaded hoppers waiting to be pulled out. The tracks would have ended here in this field and would not have reached Deer Creek which is just around the corner. Looking at it from another perspective, standing on the bridge over Deer Creek, Rawlings Run enters Deer Creek. The back side of the existing building would have been the mining area. The mining sets of tracks, railroad tracks, would have crossed Rawlings Run, entered this large field, and would have ended. And as a side note to historical information, the main part of Indianola Village was built off of Route 910 and on the top of the hillside up Republic Avenue. I would like you all to walk with me now up the driveway where St. Timothy's 
church once stood. Built in 1920, many a miner worshipped here, many a miner were married here, and many a miner were buried from here. The church withstood the test of time. All that remains is the parking lot and a mound of earth. The church was torn down sometime between 2008 and 2010. Seen here is the last standing building from the Indianola coal mine. It's the doctor's office and the hospital, also known as Building One. Maps of the Harmer Mine and the LaBelle Coke Company of 1918. Both maps showing the inland collieries underground workings. Here is a very interesting map showing the Indianola Coal Company bordered by the inland collieries and the Republic Coolieries. Another showing the Indianola Coal Company, the Inland Coolieries, and the Republic Iron and Steel Company's Bessemer Mines. A 1920 map from the Inland Colliery of the Indianola Mine. 1936 map of the Indianola mine when it was operated by the Republic Steel Corporation. I have highlighted the surface mining features and the railroad system for the Indianola mine. Top upper left was the hoist house loading area. Here the track flow to through and past the loading area. The Bessemer and Lake Erie Railroad will be discussed in part two of this video. Rawlings Run flowing into Deer Creek, multiple rail tracks crossing Rawlings Run, and the old Timothy Church. The old fire department and again Timothy Church.
In late 1915, before the inland collieries bought the options for the Indian and all the coal fields, they sent their representative, T.G. Fear, of Birmingham, Alabama, to determine the feasibility of opening a coal mine in Indianola. After Fear had arrived, he located Taylor's shaft and mineable coal. A short time later, he returned home to file his reports. Inland purchased the property in 1917. Plans were laid and T.G. Fear returned to Indianola with hand-picked workers. The community and the mine would be built on Washter property and the Crawford property. Jay Gaines was put in charge of housing. Some of the first houses were catalog homes. Bought from catalogs as kits and constructed on site. These first homes, which numbered at least 100, were built on the hillside above the mining area. The road leading to these homes was named D.P. Boulevard, which was later renamed Republic Avenue. All of the houses were sequentially numbered. A sawmill was built just past Rawlings Run. Many of the Indianola homes were copies of catalog homes. The blueprints from 1917 show plans for 111 homes on the Crawford Farm, Republic Avenue, but the number was lowered to 108 to allow for the 35 additional homes to be built on the Duncan Farm. This section was called the Nancy Duncan Tract, or Russian Town. The Republic Avenue section was originally meant to be the main section of town. There was also a Hillcrest subdivision and a Circle subdivision. In the Circle subdivision, the house numbers ran from number 170 through to number 183. These houses were laid out above and to one side of the mine. Oddly enough, the streets were in a U shape. Washington Avenue, where this video began, was the outer street with Lincoln Drive being the inner street. There was Grant and, of course, Shaft Street. Other streets named Boss's Row or Silk Stocking Row were where the company officials and bosses lived. Other homes were built on the opposite side of Route 910 and along Indianola Road near Republic Avenue. There were at least 206 homes built here for company officials and miners alike.